All right. Want to praise God today. Amen. As we welcome him into our service. I tell you, we've had a good time already today. Amen. Let's give him praise. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Those of you watching by TV, listening by radio, all I can say is you ought to be here. We don't get everything on the camera, amen, that, that goes on around the church here. You need to come out and be with us. Bless his name today. If you're listening by radio, you can go to www.theshepherdshouse.net. You can get the entire program. Our radio programs are about 30 minutes in length and uh, live stream in TV closer to an hour. So uh, you can go to the website and get all of that. All right, in 2 Kings chapter 7, 2 Kings chapter number 7, starting in verse number 1, I want to read a very familiar story to you. Then I'd like to go over into the book of Acts in chapter 2 and read a little bit there. Uh, hopefully the Lord will let me tie these scriptures together today. And without the anointing, we know that nothing that's done will be uh, uh, in any uh, uh, Cord, but we know that with the anointing that God's able to break the yoke of sin and bring deliverance, amen, when the anointing of God uh, rests is in our service. All right, 2 Kings chapter 7, verse 1 says, Then Elisha said, Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord, Tomorrow about this time shall a measure of fine flour be sold for a shekel, and two measures of barley for a shekel in the gate of Samaria. Then a lord on whose hand the king leaned answered the man of God and said, Behold, if the Lord would make windows in heaven, might these, this thing be? And he said, Behold, thou shalt see it with thine eyes, but shall not eat thereof. And there were four leprous men at their entering in of the gate. And they said one to another, Why sit we here until we die? If we say we will enter into the city, then the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. If we sit still here, we die also. Now therefore come, let us fall unto the host of the Syrians. If they save us alive, we shall live. And if they kill us, we shall but die. And they rose up in the twilight to go unto the camp of the Syrians. And when they were come to the uttermost part of the camp of Syria, behold, there was no man there. For the Lord had made the host of the Syrians to hear a noise of chariots and a noise of horses, even the noise of a great host. And they said one to another, Lo, to the king of Israel hath hired against us the kings of the uh, Hittites, and the kings of the Egyptians to come upon us. Wherefore they arose and fled in the twilight and left their tents and their horses and their asses, even the camp as it was, and fled for their life. And when these lepers came to the uttermost part of the camp, they went into one tent and did eat and drink, and carried thence silver and gold and raiment, and went and hid it, and came again, and entered into another tent, and carried thence also, and went and hid it. And they said one to another, We do not well. This day is a day of good tidings, and we hold our peace. If we tarry till the morning light, some mischief will come upon us. Now therefore come, that we may go and tell the king's household. So they came and called unto the porter of the city, and they told them, saying, We came to the camp of the Syrians, and behold, there was no man there, neither voice of man, but horses tied and asses tied and the tents as they were. And he called the porters and they told it to the king's house 
within. Let us go into the New Testament in Acts chapter number 2, starting in verse number 14. The Word of God says, this was a day of Pentecost. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit, Upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and upon my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I shall show wonders in heaven above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire, and vapor of smoke. The sun shall be turned into darkness, and the moon into blood before the great and notable day of the Lord. And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Let us pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, coming before you once again, asking you, Lord, for the anointing of the Holy Ghost to rest upon me today. For without the anointing, we know that all that's said and done would be void and it would be in vain. But through the anointing of the Holy Ghost, we know, Lord, that you're able to touch and to move on those, Lord, our Father, that are not ready to meet you, Lord, and cause them to see the need. Lord, to cry out to you, Lord, and Father, help them to feel the freedom and the liberty, Lord, to come and to call on the name of the Lord. We thank you so much for being a God that answers, Lord, by prayer, a God that answers by fire, a God that's always there to meet the needs that we have when we believe and when we call upon you. Father, I pray once again, our Father, that, Lord, you would hide me behind the shadow of the cross, that all honor, praise, and glory would go to Jesus, Lord, who is the author and the finisher of our faith. I pray, Lord, to touch the hearts of everyone that's here at the Shepherd's House today and all this joining us from around the world in different areas. I pray, Father, to deal with their hearts. Cause them, Lord, to feel the freedom, Lord, and to accept the invitation, Lord, to cry out to you before it's everlasting too late. Lord, we know today is the day of salvation. And Father, we know it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. Father, I praise you and I thank you because you are such a mighty God. In the precious name of Jesus, we humbly pray and ask all these things this day in Jesus' precious name. Amen. If I'd have a title for the message today, it would be, Why Sit We Here Until We Die? Why sit we here until we die? Now the four leprous men that were sitting on the outside of the city, they were uh, no doubt uh, uh, cast out and cast away, uh, knowing that they was not welcome uh, uh, because they were considered as being unholy. They were considered as being unclean. Uh, amen. Nobody wanted them around them because uh, uh, this leprosy was very contagious. Uh, no doubt their bodies smelled uh, and nobody wanted them around. Uh, and they were sitting on the outside uh, of the city about to starve to death because nobody was doing anything to help them. And then they finally come to the conclusion, we can either go into the city, amen, and hope that they'll have compassion on us. And if they do, we'll be okay. But if they kill us, it's not going to make any difference because we're going to die anyhow. Why don't we just, why do we sit here till we die? Let's at least get up and give it a shot. Let's go try something uh, instead of wallowing here in our despair. But besides having a pity party and feeling sorry for ourselves, uh, why don't we get up? We don't have anything to lose uh, by moving forward uh, and trusting God. Uh, amen. But you know what God's wanting today? He's wanting a people today that
that's willing uh, to trust in him. Uh, a people today that's willing uh, to move forward uh, and to trust God uh, with our problems. Uh, amen. If we, when we can learn, uh, amen, when we got a financial crisis uh, to turn to God, uh, amen, we're going to be blessed. And the thing about the Lord is this. Uh, he always makes a way for those uh, that are in need uh, when we put forth uh, the effort, uh, when we get tired uh, of being tired, uh, amen, of being in the situation uh, that we've been in for a long time. Uh, and we decide uh, that today is going to be the first day for the rest of my life. Uh, I'm giving God my problems. Uh, I'm surrendering my troubles to God. Uh, I'm going to allow him uh, to help me in every situation. But I want you to notice here in this story, in the word of God, uh, amen, how the God uh, moved an entire city out of the way so that four leprous men, amen, could eat when they put forth their faith and trusted in God. Amen, hear the sirens, amen, heard a noise of chariots. They heard a noise of horsemen. They heard a noise of horses and donkeys that didn't exist. They heard a noise of a host, meaning a mighty army. They heard the noise of them coming, but there wasn't nothing there. Amen, God made that noise come forward, uh, amen, and everybody turned chicken, uh, and they ran out of the city, amen, to, for their lives, uh, left all their food, uh, all their blankets, uh, all their silver, all their gold, uh, and because four men that was lepers decided, uh, why should we sit here till we die? Let's go into the city, give God an opportunity uh, to bless me, we're gonna die anyhow, what do we have to lose, uh, and God moved the Syrians out and they went into the first tent that they came to and filled their bellies up. They drug out the silver and the gold and then they went and told the king, guess what? The city is empty. All you gotta do is go in and get the horses and the gold and the silver. There's nobody there. They left the horses tied for you to go in and get. Amen, praise God. Amen, the Lord's always, amen, gonna make a way for us when we put our faith in our trust in him. Amen, many times we find ourselves, amen, in a rut. You know what a rut is? That's a grave with both ends kicked out. That's what a rut is. And there's many people uh, have got themselves in the rut uh, and they feel like I just can't uh, get out of this situation. Uh, amen, because that we're focusing uh, on the problem uh, instead of focusing on the problem solver. We're focusing on our sickness instead of focusing on God being the healer. We're focusing on our financial problems instead of focusing on giving God, amen, our financial problems, amen, whatever that problem is. Why should we sit and mourn over something that you can't do anything about? Why not get up, amen, and trust God? You've heard me say this many times, and I'll say it again today, amen, why don't you try Jesus. If you don't like him, uh, the devil's still got a place in hell for you uh, and he's going to antagonize you and make you feel miserable. What do you have to lose? You don't have anything to lose. Why not put your faith in your trust in God? Amen. The word tells us come and eat. Come and taste. Amen. Of the Lord. We'll find out that he's good. Why not try the Lord and allow him, amen, to pour us out a blessing in Malachi chapter 3. Amen. That there will not be room enough to contain that blessing. Why not give God a chance? Amen. You have gave yourself a chance and realize that all of your intellect, all of your power, all of your strength, all of your thinking that you know how to do everything on your own, amen, all of that mentality, I got to put my britches on just like everybody else, and I'll find a way through this situation. I want you to know there's been a few times I found out that my big boy britches didn't have enough in them. 
Hey Amen. I found out a few times in my life that there's things I could not do without the assistance of God in my life. Hey Amen. Why should I remain in the same situation? Why not get up and put forth the effort? Hey Amen. And try. There's some of you right now been laying in bed for months. Hey Amen. Saying, I'm going out to that church one of these days. Hey Amen. You just keep telling yourself that till the undertaker comes and gets you and you missed your opportunity. Amen. There's some of you, amen, keep saying, well, when things get better, I'm going to start living for God. You don't start living for God when things get better. You take your brokenness and your problems to God and let him fix it. Let him give you the strength, amen, to get you up and to get you out. You can never start a weight loss program until you start it. You can never start, amen, listen to attitude change till you work on yours. Amen, you can never find, amen, the workplace getting any better till you change your attitude. Amen, listen, we can never find, amen, a way to get through the situation. Some of you says we got a hard time in a rocky marriage right now. You're gonna always have some gravel, amen. There's gonna always be some gravel. It's in boulders that causes a problem. What you need to do is take your... Rocks, amen, to the quarry and let them crush it. Bring it to the altar, amen, and let the Lord, amen, crush him rocks. And Jesus will help you spread the gravel. Boy, that'll help you get through the mud. Amen, that'll help you get through the hard times. Amen, there's gonna be little things. Amen, that's gonna always pop up. It always blew my mind. Amen, how that when somebody was having marital problems, they go find somebody been married five times before, amen, to give them counseling. Never did make no sense to me. Why don't you go to somebody been married 50 years, amen, and been together, amen. They know what the plan is, amen, to keep a marriage together, amen. You don't need somebody, amen, to crawl off in the rut with you and whine over everything, amen, so you can sit down, amen, and sing another somebody, done somebody wrong song and talk about how bad men are and men, they're all the same, or talk about how sorry women are and all the women are just alike. That's lie. If all the women just like, I'd never got married. Amen. Understand what I'm saying. Uh, nothing against women. I like women. Uh, amen. Listen, uh, if all the men was just alike, uh, I wouldn't have any friends. Uh, amen. Thank God they're all not just alike. Uh, amen. Listen, dynamite comes in small packages. Uh, amen. Listen, there's a lot of good things. Uh, amen. Comes uh, in little quantities. Uh, amen. God's able, uh, amen, to change things. Uh, why sit here till we die? Why do we continue, uh, amen, to go on uh, in the same situation. Amen. The conclusion of the matter is this. Nothing's going to change till you get up. Nothing's going to change. Amen. Till you move forward. You're never going to get saved. Amen. Till you get up. Amen. Out of that seat of do nothing. Out of that chair of despair and put your faith and your trust in God. Amen. The best way to ever have financial prosperity is start giving to God. Amen, I had three of you. Praise God, the rest of you get repented. Amen, start giving. Praise the Lord and you'll start prospering. I'm teasing, there's more than you than three giving in here. Some of you just quiet. Some of you are afraid, amen, of commitment. Amen, because you was running a little short and you robbed God this week and you can't say amen. Hey man, you know why I never come short? Always put God's out there first and if there's not enough money, I cut back somewhere else. Amen, cut back on the groceries, they're too fat anyhow. Amen, cut back on uh, uh, some other things uh, that I might not have to have in the first place. Uh, hey, listen, let me tell you, uh, there's no reason to sit here, amen, till we die. Amen, it's high time. Uh, amen, we got up and done something about it. Uh, amen, there's some of you, uh, amen, been on your way to hell for years. Uh, you've already accepted, uh, amen, the theology that that's probably where you're gonna go. Uh, amen, but you don't have to. Uh, 
it's God, not God's will uh, that anybody should perish, uh, but that all should come to repentance. Uh, amen. The most evil man or woman on the planet, uh, amen, has an opportunity to find Jesus at an altar of prayer if they'll get up and quit feeling sorry for themselves uh, and go and seek the face of God uh, and allow God, uh, amen, to make the difference in their life. Uh, amen. The Lord don't want us, uh, amen, to suck on a, a, a sour a persimmon, uh, he wants us, uh, amen, to be happy. Uh, amen, some of you need to sip on sweet tea uh, instead of the tardy stuff that you've been sipping on. Amen, the devil today is really good, uh, amen, about showing us things, uh, amen, that's not right. Uh, amen, the devil's really good uh, at deceiving us uh, and telling us that you can't get saved, uh, that you're different than other people, uh, that you're just too weak uh, and you don't understand. Uh, there's a lot of people today has never been saved because the devil has gave them the mindset uh, that you'll never be able to live it. Let me give you a little bit of a help right here. I'll agree, you can't ever live it in your own strength, but through Christ, all things are possible. Amen, I can't live right by myself. I have to walk hand in hand with Jesus. And when I walk hand in hand with Jesus, I don't drink, amen, I don't lie, I don't cheat, amen, I don't steal, I don't do those things, amen, because the Lord is giving me strength Strength. I don't go to the hell holes. I don't watch the stuff on television. I live a sanctified life because my hand is in the hand of Jesus. I don't have the ability. The flesh is weak. If you surrender to the flesh, amen, he'll have you just like a hog, amen, that don't have no rings. You'll be rooting in everything. You'll be like rooting, tooting, pooting. You'll be causing trouble. Amen, you'll be rooting around where you ain't got no business. Amen, rooting around. Amen, there's a lot of Christians. I'd love to give them some spiritual rings. I'd love for the deacons to get them in a headlock and let me put some rings in their nose. Amen, to keep them. Amen, for rooting into things. Amen in places uh, that they ain't got no business going. I raised hogs when I was a boy. Know all about, uh, amen, the ringing and the castration part, uh, amen, all about those uh, working on hernias and all that kind of stuff. Oh, yeah, cutting their tails off and, uh, you know, breaking out the tushies. Uh, I've done all of that stuff. Uh, hold the old sow while Grandpa gave her a shot and him crippled up with arthritis. Uh, and I thought it's going to take him a half a day and that old hog will pull in and a squall in. Uh, and me, a little fella, she had dragging me around through the stable and me trying to hold back, calling, whoa! And her pulling uh, me around while he went and got a shot. I forgot uh, I was going to give her our 10 cc's of pure mycin while I was there. I'll be back in a minute. And he's just about like that to Tim Conway on, uh, you know, Carol Burnett show. Amen, the old man. That's about the way that he was. Amen, and that old hog pulling me around. Amen, listen, I know what it's like to work on hogs. I know what it's like. Amen, listen, to ring them. Amen, we don't need to be rooting around. Amen, in the roots and the muck. Amen, in the ungodly things of this world. We need to let God get us up out of that hell hole. We need to let God get us up out of that rut, amen, that we've been in. Amen, it's high time. Amen, we decided I'm not going to sit here till I die. I'm going to do something about this situation. I'm going to stop sitting on a church pew, looking at everybody else, worship the Lord and feel good for them. Amen, this ain't a place to come. Amen, for entertainment. Amen, you need to get in and praise God yourself. Amen, you need to give your heart and your life to God. Brother Jimmy, there's things I can't understand. Amen. The best thing to do to get your understanding, amen, is go and hear the word. And then you need to get saved. When you get saved, the Holy Ghost will give you, amen, the understanding. He'll open things up for you. He will help you to understand things and to see things. Amen, all these years, amen, that I've been preaching, there's still every once in a while, the Lord will open up something new, amen, for me in the scripture that I had a better understanding than I did before, amen, but sitting down saying, well, I don't understand everything. Then I've heard this goofy teaching out there. Well, the Bible's not meant to be understood. That is stupid. 
Amen. It's not ignorant, it's stupid. You were born ignorant, you were trained to be stupid. Amen, that's stupidity. Amen, the Bible wasn't written. But the Lord did say, I think I'll write a book and confuse everybody. I don't want them to understand it. I just give them something to do. No, that's not the way that it is. He opens up the scripture, amen, through the Holy Spirit. Amen, he gives us guidance. Amen, through teachers. Amen, through preachers. We got the five, five-fold ministry in the church. I wish some of y'all would meet to. Amen. We got a pretty good teacher here. My wife married him 45, almost 45 years ago. Some of y'all's never heard him teach. You ought to come. He would help you. Amen. Every now and again. Amen. Listen, I wear the pastor's hat, the teacher's hat, sometimes the janitor and the carpenter and the plumber, electrician, and whatever else we have a need of. Amen. Listen, sometimes. Amen. We need, amen, all that we can get of God. Why should we sit here till we die? Why should we continue on? Amen. On the day of Pentecost. Amen. There was Peter. Oh, he was scared to death. Amen. Amen, just a, a little while before the day of Pentecost, he denied, amen, Jesus three times, amen, during the night and the cock crew and when the rooster crowed, amen, the next morning, he remembered what Jesus said. Peter had told Jesus, Lord, I'm ready to die for you. I'll die for you. And Jesus said, Peter, before the rooster crows, this night you'll deny me thrice. It means three times. Amen, and he did. But on the day of Pentecost, amen, when the Holy Ghost was poured out, amen, and when the Christians, amen, and all the others was hearing these men from Galilee, they were ignorant and unlearned. They could not speak, amen, any other language, amen, speak to every man in a tongue that they could understand. Amen, Peter got up, amen, because people are saying these people are drunk. These people are nuts. They're drunk. Peter got up and said, hey, let me tell you, these people are not drunk like you suppose, but this is only the third hour. It means 9 a.m. There's nobody drunk. This is a prophecy of the prophet Joel. In the last days, I shall pour out of my spirit upon all flesh. My sons and my daughters shall prophesy upon my handmaidens. My servants shall pour out of my spirit. The old men shall have dreams and the young men shall have visions. Amen. He explained to him. Amen. Peter wasn't scared anymore. He had the boldness, amen, to stand up and proclaim what was coming or what was there. Amen. We need the power of God. It was the Spirit of the Lord that gave Peter the understanding to know this is the power. This is the promise of the Father. Amen, and most of the modern day church, amen, runs like a scalded cat. Amen, when the spirit goes to moving, amen, they get scared and they run. Amen, they get scared of what they need the most. Amen, they like to sit, amen, and calculate and think, amen, and compromise and consider, dwell and meditate. Let me tell you something now. Amen, if every one of us under the sound of my voice today would spend more more time meditating on the things of God instead of meditating on your problems, on the hypocrites you know, amen, on the, amen, the other things that you don't like, amen, in the government and other things in society you don't like. Amen. If we'd spend more time thinking about our heavenly home, we spent more time remembering how God got us through all of those things that we faced in the past. There's not anything that you'll ever face that God won't get you through if you'll put your faith and your trust in him. We've got to have the mindset, I'm not going to stay this way. I may have came in that way, but I'm going to leave a different way. I may have came in that way today, but before I go to bed tonight, there's going to be a change in my house. There's going to be a change in my life I'm giving my heart to God today. I'm going to quit worrying about what somebody thinks about me. I'm going to quit stopping about all, uh, stop thinking about all them hypocrites out there. If it'll make you feel better, I know more hypocrites than any of you do. 
I could write down books and books, uh, give you phone numbers and addresses. For some of them, uh, if you give me a few minutes to look them up in the pages, uh, the white pages of the phone book, uh, but that ain't got nothing to do with my relationship with Jesus. Uh, it don't have nothing to do with your relationship with Jesus. Uh, see, the lepers could have sat there and said, well, we, we've been lepers for years. Uh, we're about to die. I feel sorry for me. Let's just lay over on our side, uh, and whichever one goes first, the other three will pray for him. We'll just leave things the way that it is. It's kind of like the story about the three men that work together. Amen. They work together on a skyscraper. And every day at lunch, they'd all three bring their lunch pail. And they'd sit down on the top of that skyscraper. They'd hang their legs off, you know, about 50 stories in the air. They would eat lunch together. And finally one day, one of the men said, you know what? I've got baloney in my lunch pail today. It's baloney every day. The other one said, I'm the same way. That's all she can think about is baloney. The third one says, that's what I've got is baloney. I'm tired of baloney. And finally that one man said, it's the same old thing over and over again and again. Day after day after day, week after week after week, all I've got is a bologna sandwich. He said, I'm ready for a change in my life. He said, I'm telling you what, tomorrow if I come and I open this lunch pail up, if it's got bologna in it, I'm going to get back as far as I can, take a running leap to my death off this 50-story building. Though the second man said, I'm with you, brother. I'll make a pack with you. And the third man said, I'll do the same thing. The next day they came to work and the whistle blew at 12 o'clock. It was time for everybody to take their lunch. So they all three dreaded getting their lunch pail. All three sat down like they did every day. One of them said, I dread this, but I'm, I'm going to hold on to my oath. And the other, three said, we, other two said, we, we will too. So he opened up his lunchbox and he said, Tuna fish, praise God. Whew. Thank you, Lord. The second one opened up his lunchbox. He said, oh, he said, a fish sandwich. He said, praise God. God. He said, oh, I'm so relieved. The third man opened up his lunchbox and said, baloney, like always. He got up, backed up, took a running leap to his death off the building. One of the men looked to the other and he said, Oh, he said, how sad. He said, that's not the sad thing. He's never married. He fixes his own lunch. <laughs> hey, man, that's the sad thing. Uh, why sit here till we die? Why do we continue on? Uh, amen, doing the same thing. Uh, amen, the same way. Amen, when there's a way, we can do something about it. Uh, amen, if we really put forth the effort, uh, if we really tried, uh, amen, I can do all things. Uh, amen, through Christ, it strengthens me. Uh, amen, there's not anything, uh, amen, that we cannot overcome. Uh, amen, the word says, uh, we are more than overcomers uh, through Christ Jesus. Uh, there's not a mountain, uh, amen, that we cannot say to that mountain, uh, amen, if we have faith the size of a grain of mustard seed, be thou removed and it shall be gone. There's not anything uh, that we cannot do if we have a mindset. Uh, amen. If we've got an attitude, uh, if we're working in faith, uh, if we're believing uh, really in our heart uh, that God really don't want me to go to hell, God really don't want me to burn uh, an eternity in a lake of fire, he would not have sent Jesus if it had not been for me having an opportunity to get saved. I'm going to do something about it. I'm going to listen real close today. I'm going to go and I'm going to pray. Can I tell you how I prayed when I got saved? I got on my face before the Lord, and I said, Lord, I don't know how to talk to you. I ain't got the words. Lord, I don't know how to talk to you. And I'm scared to death. I was shaking, and I was trembling as the water ran off my body. As I crawled out of the bathtub that day, under conviction and scared to death, I got on my face before God. But I said, Lord, forgive me of my sins. The Lord had just also told me I was going to have to preach. And I said, Lord, I don't know how to preach. I can't preach. I don't know nothing about the Bible. I don't know anything about how to do that. But, Lord, if you'll take this burden away from me, I'll preach it don't matter what it is, even if it kills me. I can't live another day like I'm living. I've got to have some relief. I've got to have some help. I've got to have a, a, a touch from the Lord. And the Lord gloriously 
save my soul. It felt like two cubby of uh, birds flew out of my chest at the same time. It felt like somebody had picked up a 100-pound feed sack off of both shoulders, uh, lifted it up as a covey of birds flew out of my chest. I was free for the very first time in my life. Amen. I had hope. I had life. Now I had eternal life. Amen. Through Christ Jesus, I realized it wasn't about having the fancy words to say. It was about surrendering my heart. Amen. Getting out of that that ditch, getting out of that situation, amen, and going into the city of God, amen, by allowing God, amen, to make the changes in our life, amen, too many people today, amen, they put, uh, put a harness and a bridle on salvation. They say, Lord, I want to get saved, but I'm going to have to stay in control. Lord, I want to control how I get it and how I'm going to act and what I do. I'm, I'm going to control this thing. I, I've got to get it just like my grandma got it. I've got to act just exactly like grandpa did. No, you don't. Amen. Everybody's different. One laughs, one cries, one shouts. Another might get up and walk the back of the pews. Somebody else might sit real quiet and just cry. Amen, but they've all been set free. They've all been touched by the hand of the Lord. They've all, amen, have been forgiven of their sins. Amen, they all have been delivered from the hands of Satan. Amen, and it feels good to everybody. Amen, you may react a little different than somebody else. Amen, quit trying to make yourself. Amen, wait until God deals with you a certain time. I'm going to do a little teaching here. Amen. For just a moment, slow down if the Lord would let me. Amen. I don't know how many times down through the years I've saw ignorant stuff like oh, you can come to our revival this fall. We have a revival the second week of October and you can get saved. I think you ignorant thing. What if they get killed in a car wreck? What if they have a brain aneurysm and go out into hell? You can get saved in your bathtub or right out beside of it because I did. Amen. You can get saved uh, anywhere. I had a friend. Uh, he's gone on to be with the Lord now. He died last year way up in his 80s. Uh, he told me that he got the letter in the mail uh, way back when he was a young man. He'd been drafted into war. He said he scared me to death. He said the Saturday before I was getting ready to tell my parents bye and get on the bus to go to Louisville or wherever it was, he's going to have to go. He said I was scared to death. He said on the back of a red saw mule. He said, I was headed to the spring to water the mule. He said, I stopped under the shade tree on top of the hill above the spring. He said, I got saved. He said, I remember one time when the bombs was a falling. I remember thinking, if I can get to them woods over there, I ought to be free. And I've got a long ways to run. And I may be the next one that dies. He said, I remember on the back of that mule what happened to me. And it gave me strength to know that if I get blowed up before I get to them woods, I'll be in the arms of Jesus. And he said, I got out of that foxhole. And I run with everything that I had within me, praying as a Bombs was a falling as the hand grenades was hitting all around. He said, when I got inside them woods, he said, I'm thankful that I've been saved on the back of that red saw mule. Hey, it's not by power, it's not by might, but it's by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts. Amen, it's through his word, through his power. It's not through education. Amen, it's not through going through a program at the church. Amen, it's not by getting a certificate. It's not by baptism baptism alone is for being born again by the spirit and the power of God. It's when a sinner no longer is a sinner anymore, but he brings his sins or her sins to an altar of prayer and said, Lord, I've messed up. I'm worthy of death. I'm worthy of hell. But Lord, if you will apply your blood to my life, I know I can be set free. I believe that you died on the cross to set me free from my sins. I accept that blood. I accept what was done on the cross. This day, I give you my life, and I'm going to continue on. I remember telling the Lord, oh, I felt so good the day that I got saved. I remember telling the Lord, Lord, please don't ever 
let me get back in this kind of shape anymore. My first prayer, Lord, and I don't know how to pray. This is my first prayer I've ever prayed. Lord, kill me before I ever get back in that kind of shape. So far, amen, I got in and I've stayed in all these 40 plus years. I plan on finishing it up, amen, serving the Lord. I done went too far now to turn back. Amen, you done come too late to convince me that God don't heal. You done come too late to convince me that God don't reach way below the bottom and pull the most vilest sinner, amen, out of the pig pen, amen, and give us deliverance and salvation. He won't get in a pig pen with you. He won't wall in the mud with you. Amen. But that long arm of grace will reach all the way from glory. Amen. If we'll just look up and say, why sit here till we die? I'm going to go to the altar. I'm going to cry out to you. I'm going to let you take care of my problems, Lord. Amen. And that loving arm of love will reach down from heaven and he'll extend that hand for us to take his hand in ours and he'll jerk us up out of that mud. He'll wash us off. He'll make us a new creature and he'll start us on a new journey, a journey of victory, a journey of life. Amen. I've been serving the Lord for over 40 years. I don't want to kill myself. I want to live. I want to enjoy preaching the gospel. I want to enjoy every day. Amen. I have on this planet every day that I get up. I think about to get to be with my wife today of almost 45 years. We get to spend some time together today. Amen. Listen, I'm glad I've got something to live for. Amen. I don't get up with a mully grub. I don't know what the old heifer's going to do today, but she's get out of my way. I don't live like that. Amen. I look to see what my angels are doing. Amen. I want to be with her. Amen. God calls us to be that way. Amen. Listen, when you fall in love and then fall in love with Jesus, amen, the marriage will come together like it's supposed to. Amen. Amen. We got married May 13th, 1977. Uh, amen. I give her that lip lock. As soon as the preacher got done preaching that day, I'm still giving her the lip lock uh, 45 years later. Amen. Well, Jimmy, you're getting personal now. Some of you need to be shook, woke up, moved up. Uh, amen. Some of you need to understand. Uh, amen. God put you together. Amen. Not to fight. Uh, he didn't have a two-man army, one on each side. Amen. But to join together with love. Amen. And being together in that unity, what God puts together, let no man put us under. Amen. To work together as a team. Amen. Mm-hmm. Praise God. Amen. It's kind of like, uh, amen, the old man said years ago, uh, amen, he was uh, uh, going up through the field and he was sitting on a wagon and his wife was sitting beside him and they was uh, uh, going up uh, the hill and I had a team of mules pulling that wagon and said he got down about halfway up that hill and said he was a little bit muddy and everything said them mules was putting in there everything they could get as they was walking. Said the veins was popping out on their legs and they was a snorting because the load was heavy. Uh, but they was pulling together. Every time they took a step, uh, the other and took a step right beside the other. Now, they'd learn to match uh, one another, uh, amen, to take their steps together as a team working together at the same time. The woman looked up to the husband and said, why can't we work like, like that team? He said, we could if we only had one tongue between us. <laughs> Hallelujah. Some of y'all ain't got to hear it. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Sometimes, amen, we need to learn. Go into Ephesians 5, starting in verse 21. Amen. And read about the home. Get out of the rut. Amen. Get out of the ditch. Amen. Get out of the situation that you're in. Amen. Look for a better life. Look for a better home. Amen. Listen, you're always going to be un equally yoked when one of you is following Jesus and the other is holding on to the world. I just can't give the world up. I'm scared to get saved. I'm scared. I've never been saved before. Some of y'all don't believe this, but I wasn't saved until I got saved. Amen, I wasn't born preaching. I was 23 years old. Amen, I listened to the devil and followed him. Amen, listen, I've done things I shouldn't have been doing. Amen, I'm thankful that God straightened me out, called me to preach and saved me. Amen, none of us were saved until we got saved. That airplane pilot wasn't bored flying an airplane. Mm -mm. 
Amen. He had to get there. Amen. Through learning, through training. Uh, amen. Through practicing uh, before he was ever turned loose. Uh, amen. God's going to change our lives. Uh, we've got to allow him. Uh, or Brother Jimmy, I can't see myself as being a, a Christian. Uh, amen. Quit trying to look uh, how you're going to dress and how you're going to act. Uh, amen. And just pray. Uh, amen. For forgiveness uh, and for the burdens to be gone uh, and for your name to be written in the Lamb's Book of Life uh, and everything else will fall together like it's supposed to. Your job will fall together like it's supposed to. Your marriage will fall together. Amen. Come together like it's supposed to. Amen. Your children will start having reference for you. Amen. Like that you're supposed to. I was told by one of my daughter-in-laws not long ago. In fact, she said it in front of the church where we were visiting. She said, the reason that my husband is the way that he is today is because of Jesus and because of his daddy. And she said, and mama, said, he's told me story after story after story where he wouldn't allow things to go on in the home and he stood for what's right. Now then, he's pastoring a church and he's walking and he's learning. See, if you'll raise your kids, amen, when they get old, they won't depart from it. I got two more. They was raised the same way. They're on their way back. The prodigals is getting ready to come home. They just don't know it yet. Amen. Because daddies are praying and mamas are praying. And God's working. He's been faithful. Amen. God has in everything. Amen. He's been faithful in that. Amen. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Amen. Listen, pray and believe in. Amen. And the Lord will give us whatever the Father will give us, whatever we ask. In my name, Jesus said, and I'm asking this in his name. I'm asking other things, amen, in the Lord's name, and I'm seeing God, amen, moving and changing other things around. Amen, Brother Jimmy, does a devil attack you? I'm not over 15 minutes apart. Amen, one attack after another. Amen, I'm used to it. I'm used to him. Amen. I don't like him, but I'm used to him. But I'm also used to a heavenly father that loves me. Amen. That gives me positive thinking. That gives me hope in everything. Amen. I don't look at everything as being a failure. I look at things. Amen. As being hopeful. Amen. Every person, no matter how bad they are. Amen. God, amen, can change their life and turn them around. Look at the apostle Paul. He killed more Christians than any man on the planet. Locked up women and children, persecuted, tormented them. And Jesus struck him down on the road to Damascus and said, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Why do ye kick against the pricks? Amen, the goads. Amen, that means the prophets. Amen, listen, God struck him blind. That was the first day Paul was able to see. Amen, when God struck him blind, amen, God struck him blind, amen, he sent him to Ananias, amen, the Lord told Ananias, I'm sending Saul to you, I've struck him blind, I want you to lay hands on him and pray for him. Oh, Ananias said, oh, this is Saul the Tetrarch. How am I going to do this? Amen. Listen, when God touches somebody's life, amen, it's different. Amen. I'd have loved to have been there that day and saw that prayer meeting. Amen. When Ananias, amen, laid hands on Apostle Paul, amen, and prayed in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, open his eyes so he can see. Amen. And Paul, amen, said, my ministry's got started. I once was blind. But now I see, I once was lost, but now I found. I once was a killer, but now I'm a healer. I once was one that put them in bondage, but now I'm preaching the marvelous gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen, to set them free, man, I feel like preaching. Hey, hey listen, the anointing has been in this place today. Hey, listen, I could run to Glasgow and back. I'm thankful, amen, listen, we don't have to sit here till we die. We can get up and do something about it. This sister back here has been having a terrible back pain. We anointed her and prayed for her last Sunday. She told me one day this week, she said, I went six days and no back pain, Brother Jimmy. 
I said, praise God, she's got the seventh day today. She's back, amen, to church this morning. Amen, that's the kind of God. She could have sat back there and said, oh, me, oh, me, I'm having it so bad. Amen, or she could get up, amen, and do something about it. Amen, the challenge today is, why should you sit here any longer? Why don't you give it to God? Amen, I've done seen the Lord do too many things. I know what he can do. I know what he's still doing. And the word says, Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. Praise the Lord. Amen, some looks for signs. I wait for him. Wait for the Holy Ghost to move on in our lives. This brother back here was teased me. Beginning of the service, he said, I was sitting there thinking, is this really a Pentecostal church? And he said, I've seen that lady go down the aisle barefoot. He said, yeah, it's Pentecostal. Amen, you can't always go, amen, by the signs, amen, but I tell you what, these signs will follow them, they will believe, amen, they'll hold hands, they'll lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. He didn't say it might, might's his own chickens, might's his own ducks, you don't want any might's, don't want any maybes, amen, lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover, they will speak with new tongues, Amen. If they drink any deadly poison, amen, it won't harm them. They can take up serpents. I wasn't talking about a snake. He was talking about that demonic spirit, amen, like drug addiction, alcohol addiction, amen, lust. Amen, somebody's battling with lust. You can't keep your mind, amen, off a woman, and it don't matter whose it is. Lord, help me. I've done real good up to now, and I don't quit preaching, going to meddling. Amen. You can be delivered from that, no matter what that is. Amen. No matter how great it is or how strong it is, God tears down strongholds, and he gives deliverance to those that would believe and those that would get up and say, I'm not going to go back there no more. I'm moving forward. Now, let me hit one more lick here, and I'm going to quit, hopefully. Amen. There's some of you sitting in church. Been a long time in the house of God and you've not been able to express yourself. On the inside, it's like Niagara Falls. Oh, Brother Jimmy, you mean it can be better? Yeah. Lift your hand up and give him a wave offering and see if something don't come. Amen. Allow him, amen, to help you to express, amen, how good that it feels on the inside. I remember, I'm going to tell this story. I'm going to try to quit. I remember being at a communion feet washing service up around uh, uh, Glendale, on the other side of Glendale, up in that area, the uh, other side of Cecilia, Kentucky one night. And, uh, man, we would had us a time. The Holy Ghost was moving. And the brothers was washing their feet on this side and the women over on the other side and people were shouting, splashing water everywhere. They didn't have that many pans, had a pretty good sized crowd. Back then, people showed up for feet washings. Now you announce it and you have the deacon and the pastor and that's about it on the men's side and you have the pastor's wife and a couple of women on the other and everybody else sitting at home. Amen. Mm-hmm. But we had a big crowd that night and the brother I wanted to wash his feet, I couldn't get to him. All these brothers, they was all around him everywhere and I thought, well, I'll just get on my hands and knees and I'll just crawl. So I crawled up under them pews, got in behind that brother. I was washing his feet this way on my belly. And the Lord said, if you come out from on that seat, I'm going to give you something I didn't give you before. I said, well, Lord, what is it? He said, come out from on that seat. I've got something for you. Now, before I tell you what happened, let me tell you this. I'd always been timid. Whenever I shouted, and, you know, if I had one of those, you know, those dividers that goes in the church, you know, you slide them over again this wall and slide the other divider, I'd go in behind that divider where nobody could see me and let up my war hoops. Didn't like to be seen openly. But see, the Lord's getting ready to do something different for me that day, that night. So as soon as I come out from that seat, I thought, well, Lord, what is it? 
As soon as I come out from that seat, the Holy Ghost hit me. I tell you what, I danced all over the front of that church at night. I never seen anything like it. Some of them told me that Elvis Presley never moved like I did that night. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord was upon me. There was something new. It was a new movement. Amen. A freedom to worship unafraid. Amen. To worship the Lord and to dance before God and to give him honor and praise. Amen. That day, amen, my life will begin to change as he opened up new doors. Amen. I'm beginning to see people in our church that used to wouldn't wiggle a finger. Amen. To stand up now and praising God. There's a day coming. Amen. When the whole church is going to do that, you're going to get out of your intimidation mode and you're going to stand up and say, listen, God done just as much for me as he did for you. He delivered me from hell and he saved my life more than one time. And he's delivered my children. And if you're going to get up and you're going to act like a wild man, scoot over, Buster. There's room for another. I'm going to cut the rug. I'm going to let the world know that I'm free and I'm happy and I'm blessed. Amen. I'm blessed because that Jesus died, rose again. Amen. On the third day, bless his holy name. Amen. Then he sent back 40 days later. Amen. He he sent back 50 days later, sent back the Holy Ghost. Amen. Thank God today. Brother Jimmy, you mean you one of them? I said, yes, I is. I'm one of them. I plan on staying that way. I'm free. Jesus set me free. I'm no longer on the way to hell. I'm no longer controlled by addictions and other things. Amen. I'm controlled by the Spirit of the Lord. I'm God's man. Amen. And I'm free. Brother Jimmy, you're wild. Thank you. Come get wild with me. Amen. Let's bless the Lord and let's praise him. Woo, what a message today. Bless his holy name. Stand with me while we say bye to the TV radio audience. The Lord loves you. God's doing something in our ministry, in this church. The Lord wants to do something for you. Are you going to sit there till you die? Or are you going to do something with it?